morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, and welcome to uh, our worship to Henderson Presbyterian Church worship service. How was your week? Good? Yes, I hope it's all good, well and good. But for those who was that uh, good, you come to the right place. Yes, because as we worship God, we know we'll be refreshed and be relaxed, not only by His Word, but by the fellowship of our fellow believers. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28, it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, a kingdom where Christ is our king, a kingdom that lasts forever. And as a response to God's generous grace, we come to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so, whether you are here inside the sanctuary or joining us through YouTube, let us leave our full selves to God, offering Him our time, our talent, and treasure, and uh, being fully immersed in listening to this word of life. To God be all praise and glory. Amen. For our announcements, yes, we have uh, used, uh, our adult Sunday school and coffee hour after our worship service. And uh, we have our adult Bible study this coming Thursday, July 14, 10 in the morning at the Fireside Room. We also have our Board of Deacons meeting after the worship service during coffee hour in the library. And also for the session, our session meeting will be this coming Tuesday, July 12, 6 p.m. at the Sunday School Room. Next Sunday, I'm inviting all and invite maybe family and friends to join us in our worship because the Teen Challenge Men's Group will be here. They will sing a song and give a testimony. Okay. So, indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, God is good all the time. If there are no other answers, Seeing none, I have one quick question. Is this loud enough for everyone? Yeah. Will you please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship? The gift of a new day. I'm ready, I'm ready to A new day with surprising miracles. love Gift of a new day, God's gift to us. Please bow your heads for the opening prayer. As we enter into worship, we want every word that is spoken or sung to lift you up and make your name great. We desire to proclaim your truth, to hear from you your word, and to respond to you with worship. We have made plans for this time together. We ask that it would be truly your spirit who guides us. Let us be willing to set aside our own agendas when we sense you leading us. We are so grateful to be able to gather and we look forward with expectancy to see what you will do in and through us today. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our first hymn to God be the Lord.
endowed him with praise. He is here. now bad aid. <laughs> okay, I have your advantage. And then, maybe you can put that in your wound and I'll pray for you and I know you will feel good. Okay, who do you think of those th three persons that pass by can be considered a loving neighbor? The second one? The second one, just say, 
pray and the, the third one is the one who says pray I'll pray for you and, uh, and then give you a band aid um, third one yeah actually the second one is also good it's good that when we pass by a person who are who is in need we say oh, okay I'll pray for you and I hope you'll be good but then much better if we put into action our faith okay and that's actually the lesson of the bad faith magic okay in our lesson the story is about the good samaritan have you heard that story not yet okay <laughs> so the good samaritan is about uh, a person who was robbed and uh, he was left uh, almost uh, dead actually and then there was this uh, levite and a priest who passed but didn't do anything and it was a Samaritan who did good to that person indeed he nursed the wound and then he even brought that person to an end so that he will fully recover and that's the kind of what we call as an example of loving your neighbor that was uh, uh, illustrated to us in the Bible, okay, and that is the story of the Good Samaritan. And so, when you see someone who is in need, all you need to do is this band aid, <laughs> give him a band aid. And uh, we know that uh, when there is a wound in his body, the band aid can help to nurse the wound and uh, eventually maybe bring him comfort and peace in his heart okay so remember that when we live our life we live out our faith and it means it is a faith with action it's not only with words words and action is what the apostle paul said faith without action is dead but faith needs to have action and one of that is by loving our neighbor through giving him back hate. <laughs> so with that, I hope you now get the story about uh, the Good Samaritan and uh, the Great Commandment. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the time you have given us to uh, have Riley listen to the story of the Good Samaritan and hear about the great commandment. May he grow in faith and may you guide him, O oh God, so that as he grows, that faith and that blessing will be instilled in his mind and practice it in his life. Again, we thank you. We bring back all princes and Lord in home. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Riley. inspiring stories in terms of us being generous in our giving and being generous. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. And being generous in terms of uh, giving our time, our talent, and treasure to God. And at this time, we are in the time of uh, sharing. We give our tithes and offerings. Our offertory bags is at the back at the table at the narthex area so when we give my dear brothers and sisters we give with a cheerful heart and we are generous in giving because we know that it is better to give than to receive and uh, as we always say when we give we give what is right not what is left Amen.
because we have been given so much. Help us to give more because we are loved so much. Give us the strength to love more because we are accepted as we are. Give us the grace to accept others without judgment or prejudice. We give ourselves and our gifts with grateful hearts. Amen. Please be seated. I will now be collecting any prayer requests. Show you our heads and pray. Let us pray. God of holy hospitality, you make the world your neighborhood. Opening yourself to all, you care for those in special need of body, mind, or soul. As those who long to recreate your beloved community, we discover many neighbors far and near, many in great need. Today, we remember neighbors near and far, those around the corner and those around the world. We lift those in our community and those around the world who are injured or sick, who long for your healing, those whose disagreements bring discord, and those whose differences keep them from seeing their common humanity. For us, and all our neighbors, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We leave up the prayer request of need for safe problems for thee and glory to California and a safe return. We also leave up the perfumes, Jim and Tony, they have coffee. And uh, let's pray and we pray for their healing for God. We also leave out the prayer request of Virginia for her eyes. Continue to give her, O oh God, the vision, the clear vision for her to continue not only her ministry, but her service, complete service to you. We also leave out her friend, Alice, who is two years old and going into depression as he no longer can see or hear very well. O oh Lord, we leave up those names and those persons who have uh, given their requests and their petitions to you. But we also include all others who are sick, who are suffering, who are facing challenges in life, O oh God. We know, oh God, that you are the source of healing the source of all goodness, and the source of blessings. That's why we are here. And we know that that healing, that goodness and blessings will flow upon all of them through their faith. So increase their faith, O oh God. Increase it so that that healing and that blessings will flow upon all of them. We know you heard our prayers and that our prayers are already being answered. Jesus, our host, you tell us that the door is open to anyone who knocks. Help us to live as neighbors with all. Unite us with brothers and sisters everywhere as neighbors of yours and of ours. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to lift up all those prayers those petitions and thanksgiving to you. We pray in Jesus' name who taught us that when we pray, we pray all of us please. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now hear our choir for the song by tribute. Who will go up to heaven for us 
and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the city that you should say, move across to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear, we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Our New Testament lesson or the Gospel lesson is in the book of Luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read it? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But one thing to justify himself, he asked, Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But... A Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Again, a pleasant good morning to all. Yes, good morning. <laughs> yes, the psalmist tells us in Psalm 144, 18, 19, and 21, the Lord is near to all who call on Him. To all who call on Him in truth, He fulfills the desire of all who fear Him. He also hears their cry and saves them. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless His holy name forever and ever. We come here to call on the Lord, to speak praise of Him, and to bless His holy name. No one can match the love that God has given us, and in response, we come to worship Him and be refreshed in hearing the lessons from His Word. It is because, my dear brothers and sisters, we are God's children and the sheep of His pasture. So we bow our heads again and pray. Let us pray. As we listen to the reading and preaching of Your Word, Holy God, impart to us the message that will give us new life this day so that we may love and serve You with our whole hearts, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, what do you think is better, to give or to receive? Yes, maybe, yeah, we have different answers. And maybe the answer can be yes, no, or both both give and receive 
Well, others may say, well, it fits well in boxing. Better to give punches than to receive. Well, but in terms of our faith, which is better? The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, In all this I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hearing the word of Jesus about giving emphasized the need to apply that lesson in our life. We are not just hearers, but also doers of His Word. And that means faith with action. Yes, that is our theme for our message today based on the story of the Good Samaritan. What is faith with action and how can we act on our faith? First, it is by following God's will and commands in our life. In verse 25, it says, we have questions. Yes, we have questions, maybe because we are confused on the importance of faith and how to live it out. We have resistance or difficulty in understanding and following the commandments as we prioritize our own thinking, our own desires, and will of regards. And in answering our question and to clarify our confusion, Jesus said to look, to know, and to follow what is written in the scripture. And verse 27 tells us the great commandment, which is love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. My dear brothers and sisters, the truth is we know it. We know it. We know the scripture. We have had knowledge. Maybe the problem comes in leaving it out, in the implementation. We cherry pick what we want to follow and do justifications on those commands that we feel we cannot. That is why Jesus clearly stated what we need in verse 28, and that is to obey and follow His Word and apply it in our daily life. I remember in our Bible study two weeks ago about discipleship, we learned that discipleship is more than classroom learning. It is also on-the-job training. Not only classroom learning but also on the job training jesus taught the apostles that the kingdom was a way of life not just a mere idea or a lesson to memorize it is our way of life we need to apply the lessons from his word and the truths found in it or all that knowledge will be useless as the Apostle James has stated in James chapter 12, verses 14 to 17, But good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but does not have works. Surely that faith cannot save, can it? If a brother or a sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. That is what we need, my dear brothers and sisters. And let, let us not fall into the trap of inaction because the truth Jesus wants us to do is to help those in need. In our story in verse 29, the expert in the law Maybe he's trying to justify his inaction by again asking a question, Who is my neighbor? And maybe this is also a question in our mind today, Who is my neighbor? Looking into the dictionary, neighbors, 
The meaning of neighbor, there are two meanings that I got from the dictionary. The first one is one living or located near another. And maybe this is what immediately pops out of our mind when we hear the word neighbor. But the other meaning, which the dictionary, the dictionary reference from the Bible is simply fellow man. That's the meaning of neighbor. In the discussion of our theme today, we can see that the second meaning, which is fellow man, is the closer definition of what a neighbor is. And Jesus clarified it further in telling the story of the Good Samaritan. Jesus made it clear in that story that our neighbors are our fellow men that are in need. Yes, Jesus is teaching us that we need to live out our faith by obeying His Word through actions that we do in helping our neighbors in need. In terms of who are those neighbors in need, well, maybe let's look in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, wherein we can see our sphere of influence. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses first in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The neighbors are in Jerusalem, which means family and close friends. Judea are those fellow men who look, who act, and think like us. Samaria are those people that are not like us and sometimes people we do not like. And ultimately, the ends of the earth are those people that we have met, whoever or whatever they are. In our story, in verses 29 to 34, a priest, a Levite, who obviously knows, they know God's commandments, failed to stop and help that person in need. It was a Samaritan who, at that time, were enemies of the Jews who stopped and helped. The Samaritan knows who his neighbor is, and that is anyone who is in need. Faith with action is what we need to comply with God's commandments and for us to truly be a neighbor to others. But maybe, maybe we will ask, how can we help all those in need? I cannot help all, for we only have limited resources. Well, our story also answers the question. It is only by using what we have and having that generous heart. In verses 34 to 35 of our text, the Samaritan used whatever resources he had at that time so that he can nurse the person in need and his generosity enabled him to make extra mile as he brought the person to an inn to assure a complete healing and the recovery of that person. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to interpret this part of the story not just for the physical and material needs of a person, but more on their spiritual needs. More on their spiritual needs. We are so bombarded by the trials and temptation the world gives that have robbed the people of their identity as children of God. Yes, there are the person in need and just like the Good Samaritan, we need to reach out and help them by sharing to them Jesus, the good news and the love of God, and bringing them inside the inn or the church to be healed and eventually recover fully from the effects of sin. The church is the hospital or the place for spiritually wounded or sick people because of sin. Inside the church, we nourish those people and make them healthy once again. 
Yes, we have the HPC, we have a food bank which reaches out and helps people in need. That is a particularly effective way of expressing and living out our faith. And so let's, let's continue to contribute and donate to this program. Let us not be weary or become tired of helping. But we can do more. We can go the extra mile by bringing and sharing to all people the good news of salvation and the peace and joy of being in the kingdom of God. As we stated, we do not stretch our finances, but only use whatever available resources we have to help those people in need, specifically their spiritual needs. And the resources available to us is you. You. We, who have received and believe in Jesus, that are called children of God. All we need is for others to see Jesus in us and to invite those people within our sphere of influence to come and join. Let us not be tired of trying. Let us persevere in praying for them and in our invitation. We have a saying, try and try again until you succeed. How can we expect results if we do not make the first move? Let us move and have a faith with actions. I will end with verses 36 to 37 of our text. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy, Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. My dear brothers and sisters, let us go and do likewise. We need to act on our faith by following God's will and commands in helping those in need with whatever resources available to us. In doing so, we have fulfilled the great command to love God above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Indeed, God has given us the perspective on helping others, especially people who are in need. And we are here. We open our food stalls in helping those in need because as we do that the bible tells us that we indeed have shown love to god and to our neighbors in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen let us now rise for the closing hymn what a friend we have in jesus
dear brothers and sisters, this week you will encounter need all around you. There will be people who are hurting, lonely, tired, and sick. Will you have eyes to see them? Will you have ears to stop and listen? Will you have the humility to kneel down, pick them up, and carry them to safety? Go now, filled with the love of Jesus, and may His compassion flow through you to care for the needs of those you meet this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um.